The patient should forego any food or beverage for at least 12 hours prior to the placement of Orbera. The day of the placement, if the endoscopy performed reveals any food in the stomach, the procedure should be postponed until the following day or the next time of availability that the patient can go for 12 hours without food or drink. Before placement of the balloon, a diagnostic endoscopy is performed to identify any other contraindications such as large hiatal hernias, gastritis, and erosions. Once the patient has been properly sedated and is deemed ready for balloon placement, the uninflated placement catheter assembly is lubricated and inserted into the stomach by way of the esophagus. Correct positioning of the placement catheter at least 1 to 3 centimeters of the lower end of the placement catheter present within the stomach must be confirmed prior to removal of the guide wire. If the placement is incorrect, the balloon cannot be properly inflated and may get lodged in the esophageal opening, causing the patient to experience internal injury or the device to rupture. To confirm the placement, a J maneuver may be performed using the endoscope, with a clear view of the esophageal orifice. Once the correct placement of the balloon is confirmed, the guide wire can be removed and the balloon can be filled. Using the provided Orbera system fill kit and a 50 or 60 cc syringe, the Orbera balloon is filled with sterile saline. The balloon should be filled slowly and steadily to avoid generation of high pressure which could damage the valve or cause premature detachment. Filling of the balloon should be completed under direct visualization via endoscopy. The fill tube should remain slack during the filling process in order to prevent damage to the fill tube, which could lead to incomplete filling. Once the filling is completed and the catheter has been removed, the endoscope must be reinserted to inspect the Orbera balloon and the fill valve. At this time, it is recommended that you visualize the valve to ensure there is no visible fluid leaking from the center of the valve. Identification of a potential defect, such as balloon deflation due to a faulty or dysfunctional valve, is important for clinicians to recognize prior to completion of the insertion process. The balloon should be filled to a minimum of 400 cc in order to deploy completely. Any less, and the deployment cannot occur properly. An underfilled balloon presents a risk for balloon migration and intestinal obstruction. The maximum fill volume is 700 cc. A greater fill volume is associated with a higher risk of intestinal obstruction or death. In the Orbera pivotal study, the balloons were filled to a volume of 550 plus or minus 50 cc. Patients who use Orbera must be advised that the device is intended to be used for a maximum of six months, at which point removal is required. The reason for this maximum time limit is that placement of the balloon for longer than six months may put the patient at risk for intestinal obstruction due to the balloon deflating. Severe obstruction can ultimately lead to death. As with the placement of Orbera, a patient should only consume a diet of clear fluids within 24 hours of the removal procedure and absolutely no food or liquid for 12 hours prior to the removal procedure. Before removal, the patient is advised to revert to a semi-liquid diet as early as three to four days prior to the removal procedure because of the delayed gastric emptying caused by the device. Patients should be warned that a diagnostic endoscopy will be performed immediately prior to the procedure to ensure the stomach is empty, and failure to adhere to their prescribed diet may delay removal. If food is present in the stomach, then the airway should be secured prior to proceeding with device removal. After proper sedation has been confirmed, the airway secured if necessary, and endoscopic visualization confirms an empty stomach, an aspiration needle should be inserted through the working channel of the endoscope to the stomach to puncture the Orbera balloon. After the balloon is punctured, the catheter is pushed into the balloon an additional 5 to 6 centimeters before removing the inner needle. The saline should then be extracted via needle aspirator tubing until the balloon is completely deflated.
After this, the Orbera system can then be extracted using a two-pronged wire grasper or similar endoscopic grasper. One risk associated with the removal procedure is aspiration of the stomach contents. Even if proper preparation steps have been followed, the stomach has an increased risk of significant gastric contents when the stomach is restricted during the removal procedure. And it is particularly important to protect the airway in the event of intolerance and or any obstructive symptoms. If significant risk is anticipated, endotracheal intubation should be considered. Emergency airway management equipment, including McGill forceps, should be immediately available during the removal procedure in the event that the balloon is dropped in the upper esophagus or pharynx.